Hello guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll be looking at a tutorial on how to install Bitwarden in Raspberry Pi. And at the end of the video, I'll show you how to configure this Bitwarden server with your Android and iOS devices so that you can use it with all your uh, devices. Let me quickly try to give you some reasons why I have started using self-hosted password managers and why it is the best idea for you as well. In recent days, you might have heard about uh, multiple security breaches in some of the popular password managers. And if you have been using one of these services, there is a high possibility that your sensitive information like credit card and passwords are exposed now. See, the downside of using these services is that all your sensitive data is sitting in a data center somewhere, which is not in your control. And often these data centers are hard targets for hackers as well. That is why I've slowly moved towards self-hosted password managers like Bitwarden. In summary, self-hosted password managers provide increased control over your data and they provide multiple security features for free. And finally, all your data will be residing in your home. So hope you got a bit of idea why we are doing this. Let's get started. Before we start, there's a couple of prerequisites. The first is you must have uh, Docker installed in your Raspberry Pi. And the second is you must also have Cloudflare Tunnel installed. So the Cloudflare Tunnel will be using for the external access and also for the SSL certificates. So if you have not installed Cloudflare Tunnel in your Raspberry Pi already, there is a detailed video that I made very recently. I'll link the video below. You can follow the steps there and come back here for the BitWarren setup. So now I'm logged into my Raspberry Pi and I already have the Docker up and running. You can see that there's a couple of uh, containers running. So we'll go ahead and uh, pull the Docker image of Vault Warden first. And while it is pulling, uh, let me open up Docker up and quickly show you something here. Uh, you might have seen that it is mentioned as Vault Warden here. Uh, the difference between Bitwarden and Vault Warden is nothing but Vault Warden is specifically made for self-hosted uh, implementation. So this is a kind of a lightweight version. If you are going to use only for five to 10 users, I think it should be more than uh, sufficient. It can handle. So we already have uh, the Vault Warden container in our local repository. Let us go ahead and start the container now. So this is the command uh, which we'll be using to trigger the container. So this is the volume mount which we'll be mounting where all the Bitwarden data will be stored like uh, the SQLite database and everything. Mm. So you can go ahead and change it if you want. I'll just leave it as it is. And the port is 80. You can also change the port if you want. Let's copy this and run it in our server. Yeah, it will uh, trigger a new container for you. We'll wait till it says healthy, and then we can go and check in the browser whether the container is up and running. You can see that the container is up and running now, and also status is uh, showing us healthy, which means the container is uh, active, so that we can access the IP and check whether the vault warden homepage is loading. I think it is loading. So the Vault Warden deployment is successful, but we won't be able to create a new account now since uh, we are accessing the Vault Warden dashboard with the local IP. It requires SSL for you to access Vault Warden. So for that, we'll be using Cloudflare uh, tunneling service. As I mentioned earlier in this video, uh, if this is the first time you can check the link in the description below to set up Cloudflare. Assuming that if you have already set up Cloudflare, we can proceed to the next step. So let's uh, open up Cloudflare's dashboard. You can see that I have already selected the domain name and uh, click on DNS. And we are going to create a subdomain for uh, Vault Warden. So now uh, click on add record and click on C name. And I'm going to use pass jeffreyandro.tk as uh, domain for this. And for content, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is the UUID of your tunnel. So you can copy it from the previously created subdomains or you can copy it from your local Cloudflare configuration. Let's click on save. Yeah, now I think uh, we have a subdomain for all Warden. Let's jump back to Raspberry Pi and configure the interest rules there. I'm in my Raspberry Pi now. And since we have installed Cloudflare as a service, the config file will be located in this location. We'll open it up in any editor so that we can add the ingress rules for our Bitwarden server. You can see that we have already added the ingress rules for other uh, services which we installed earlier. 
can copy any one of the code block here and just paste it here and we can just change the domain name of the port according to our uh, bit wardens which is the domain name is pass and the port is 80 so i'll just save this and restart the cloudflare service Once it is restarted, you can uh, go into the browser and check whether the subdomain is accessible now. I'm in my browser now. Let's access the subdomain and see whether the old warden is accessible using the public domain name. Yeah, perfect. Now the English rules is also working. You can see that we got a nice little uh, lock here, which means SSL certificate is active. So now we can go ahead and create a new account for yourselves. And also make sure that you uh, create a password which is highly secure for uh, master password because this is the master password which will be holding all your uh, vault code and account. Make sure it is highly secure. So now I have created a new account for myself. Let's uh, go ahead and check whether it is logging in. Yeah, perfect. Now uh, the logging is working fine. The next step would be uh, enabling admin uh, console for Vault Warden. So let's uh, go back and check how to enable admin console. So this is fine. For enabling admin console, we need to add a parameter to the Docker uh, run command, which is nothing but uh, an admin token, so that uh, we can access the admin console more securely. This admin token has to be 48 uh, characters long. So we'll be using OpenSSL to create a random character. You can uh, use whichever is convenient for you. So let's run this command in our uh, server and copy this long string and add this variable to the docker run command. So what we'll be doing is like we'll, we'll kill the container which is running now and again we'll create a new container with this new parameters. So let's go ahead and stop the whole container now, which is running here. And then we will remove that container. Yeah, I think it is removed now. Let us run this command again to create a new container which will enable the admin console for us. Yeah. So let's see whether the new container is starting. Yeah, you can see that the new container is starting. We'll wait for a minute so that the status becomes healthy and then uh, we can access the admin console. We can see that the container is up and running now and also the status is healthy. So now let's go back to the browser and check whether the admin console is up and running. Yeah, you can see the admin console is loading now. The admin token is the one which we created. You can use the same string to log in into the console. Make sure you save this uh, string somewhere so that you can use it to log in. Yeah, you can see that uh, we are inside the admin console now. Here we'll have all the options. You can set up SMTP so that uh, you can get uh, email notifications. You can set up YubiKey settings and also multi-factor authentication. All these settings can be done in the admin console. We have successfully set up Vault Warden server in our Raspberry Pi with the admin console enabled. So as a final step, we'll see how to configure Bitwarden application so that you can use this uh, password manager with all your devices. So I've already installed Bitwarden in my Windows machine. You can download the exe from the Bitwarden official website. And the same step applies for Android and iOS as well. You can download the application from Play Store and the App Store. And when you open the application for the first time, you will see an option called Settings at the, at the top. You can click on it and it will ask you for the server URL. You know which server URL is it. And uh, this is the one which we configured uh, for our Docker container. I'm going to give mine. You can give the same. URL which you configure there, which we use in the browser, and click on save. And it says the environment URL is saved. Let us try to log in and see whether it is able to communicate. And the master password. Yeah, perfect. Uh, it's logged in now. We can now configure all your uh, login details and the card details here. And you should give the necessary permission so that we can use the autofill services as well. You can also install Chrome plugin to make use of the autofill services in the Chrome browser. 
and uh, make you make sure you log in with the same account there as well so hope you found this useful if you found this useful please uh, subscribe to the channel and also like and share my videos i'll also link uh, all the code snippets and everything in the description below thank you